Hi there, my name is Christian Gatti, and welcome to part 3 of 3 in the tutorial series of setting up an Android development environment. In this episode, we'll be installing the Eclipse Classic IDE in Ubuntu 11.10. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is change into our downloads directory. So type cd space downloads. And we'll type ls and hit enter to view the contents of this folder. Right here, you will see if you followed the previous tutorials that you have the Eclipse IDE downloaded already. So before we get started unzipping that, we are going to verify the integrity of the file by checking the MD5 hash. If you type MD5 sum and then Eclipse SDK 3.7.2 Linux dash gtk dot tar dot gz and hit enter you will get this uh, string of characters and numbers and that is actually the correct cor excuse me the correct md5 sum so if your sum matches that and I will also have a link in the video description for or not a link, sorry, but that string in the video description, so you can just check between that and your own result. And if it's the same, then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about uh, any kind of issues from a corrupt download. So now, what we're going to do is rename this file, and we're just going to do that by uh, moving it. So mv, sorry, mv eclipse-sdk-3.7.2-linux-gtk.tar.gz space eclipse.tar.gz Okay, that just makes things easier for 64-bit uh, versions or 32-bit versions because if you'll notice here where it just says Linux dash GTK, that's the 32-bit system, that, uh, that's 32-bit download. And for a 64-bit download, you'll see x86 underscore 64, like right in this area. So if you saw x86 underscore 64, just type what you see, and just following the, the uh, commands I type, you'll be fine. But after we rena rename it to eclipse.tar.gz, uh, all the commands will be exactly the same for either system from now on. Okay, so now we want to uh, extract the Eclipse file. So we're going to go ahead and uh, type tar space dash xf space eclipse dot tar dot gz. Enter. Okay, now if we type ls, we'll see now we have an Eclipse folder in here. And now we're going to move this to our home directory by typing mv space eclipse space dot dot slash eclipse. Hit enter. We'll notice that Eclipse is moved, so we'll change directory. So cd dot dot, and that will bring us up one, direct, uh, up one level, so we're going to be going to our home directory now have ls, we'll see that we have Eclipse right here. Now we're going to move away from the terminal for a moment and we're going to open up our home folder in the, in the file manager, open up Eclipse, and you'll see here is the Eclipse executable. I want you to double click on that and that will open up the program Eclipse. Now it'll take a little bit to load, so we'll just wait for it to do that. Okay, now it's going to be asking us to set a workspace as such. Um, you can set this to whatever you want. It doesn't matter where you place it, just somewhere that you think would be clean and acceptable to have all your code. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and select this as default, so it doesn't ask me to do this again. But you don't have to. You might want to make multiple workspaces. It's honestly all up to you. So whatever you end up doing, wherever you put it, just go ahead and click OK. And Eclipse will continue uh, to load for the first time.
Okay, now you can just go ahead and exit out of the welcome prompt. And the first thing we're going to do now is click help, install new software. Okay, now what we need to do is go to our web browser. if it would so kindly load. <laughs> okay, and now we need to go to developer.android.com Sorry, I typo there. Uh, go ahead and click the SDK tab. Go down to ADT 16.0.1 Click installing the ADT plugin over here. Scroll down until you have this uh, URL right here. We're going to copy it and we can go ahead and exit the web browser now. Back in Eclipse on the uh, install available software tab, we're going to click add. And under name, we're going to type ADT. And under location, we're going to paste the link that we found on the developer website, which is https colon slash slash dl.ssl.google.com slash android slash eclipse slash. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Okay, now we see that we have developer tools listed here, which is what we want. If we open up this fol uh, folder, we'll see these four things listed, which is everything that we need. So we're going to go ahead and select everything and click Next at the bottom. Okay, as long as this all still shows all four things that we need, go ahead and click Next again. Click the I accept the terms and license of the license agreements radio button and click finish. Okay, now this is going to download and install the S the uh, Android develop in, excuse me the Android Developer Tools for Eclipse. So it's a plugin for Eclipse, and I usually go ahead and click details, expand that out. You don't have to; it's, it doesn't matter. Just let it run through its course, it's going to install the software, it's going to prompt us in a little bit, and when we get to that, I'll tell you what to do. Okay, here's that prompt. We're going to go ahead and click OK. We understand that the software contains unsigned content. And it's almost done. Okay, now, we're just going to go ahead and click Restart Now. Now, this isn't restarting your computer, this is restarting the Eclipse IDE. Okay, it saves our workspace, exits, and it loads back up. Okay, now we're gonna go on a, going to go ahead and click the use existing SDK as we have already installed that. Click browse, and we're gonna navigate to our SD, where we've downloaded it to. So we've installed it right here in our home folder, or at least I have, wherever you put it, that's fine. Uh, so go ahead and hit OK and click Next. Now here you have the option to send us usage statistics to Google. I usually select the yes, there's nothing you can lose from doing it, but it's all personal preference. If you want to click no, go right ahead. But after you click one of these at least, click Finish. And there you go. You've successfully installed the Eclipse IDE and the Android developer tools within that IDE. What you'll notice that's different is these two buttons here. This one allows you to open the Android SDK Manager from within Eclipse, and this one allows you to open the Android Virtual Device Manager within Eclipse, which will allow you to run your applications that you build inside of a virtual Android device. So. That's everything that you need to get up and running with an Android development environment. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Christian Gaddy, and have fun developing.